Is it too soon to explore the pandemic through art? Not if you're Susan Laurie Parks, who wrote a short play a day while sitting at home for 13 months and has now turned those into a full-length performance at New York's Public Theater. It's part of a very big year for one of the country's most acclaimed playwrights. Jeffrey Brown has the story for our arts and culture series, Canvas. I play the writer. I play the hobby. I play the kid. Susan Laurie Parks both plays and is the I writer play the of music. plays for the plague year. I play the stalker. A series of I songs and scenes. Sit down. Catch your breath. Small I'll personal make moments. I'll make you some tea and I'll put some honey in it. And big collective traumas. I was just wanting to alert people because I'm a doctor. That take us through the first doctor. year of the COVID pandemic. And then... I got sick from the virus. She says you probably have it too. Oh, great. It's based on an assignment Parks gave, gave herself in real time. Be present, observe, write every day. It's a way to keep watch, if you will. You know, it's a way to bear witness. It's a way to say, yes, this happened. Yes, I'm watching um, and I'm gonna write it down. I have a bookshelf very It's much also like about this. the roles we all play it's each day. Though. I have a typewriter, the Olivetti Valentine. I have and a, for I have Parks, who often writes on an old red Fox typewriter, Fox. it really Fox. is a new role. I had a dream last night, it was gorgeous. For the first time, she herself gorgeous. acts and Doing sings and plays the guitar in one of her plays. Did you have any fear, trepidation, putting yourself into the story like this? Yes, I have so much fear I, I, and so much trepidation. And I think a lot of us um, realized during the, the, the in, in first year or so of the pandemic is that there were things we uh, were afraid of, are afraid of, and that we had to really look at those things. And so I looked at a lot of those things. And one of them was, oh, I'm putting myself in the story. I'm getting too old to be sleeping in that chair, it's man. My it's my place. Like you don't got no place. Now 59, Parks is best known for her play Top Dog Underdog, in which two brothers named Lincoln and Booth are bound by family ties and the burden of American history. We put aside 100 for the rent. 100 a week times four weeks makes the rent, and we don't want the rent spent. It won the 2002 Pulitzer Prize for Drama, making Parks the first African-American woman to receive that honor. And last fall had a 20th anniversary revival on Broadway. You're stealing from me! You can get it. Part of a busy attention-getting year for Parks that included her theater adaptation of the 1972 hit reggae film, The Harder They Come. And a new play that premiered at Minneapolis's Guthrie Theater titled Sally and Tom. That's Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson, set in both past and present. Plays for the Plague Year, produced at New York's Public Theater, is her most personal yet. And includes experiences at home with her real-life husband, <laughs> Christian Kanapka, and their son, now 11-year-old Durham. It's close. It's super close. Who's suddenly as I tall as his mother. I play the guy named Paul. They and many other actual people are portrayed on stage by a group of actors who take a variety of roles in short plays. I'm scared. I'm sorry. That unfold chronologically. I'm sorry, too. It's really a celebration of everyday things, whatever was happening. My office is at the kitchen table in our one-bedroom apartment. So my, I was writing at the one end of the kitchen table. At the other end of the kitchen table, there was then our eight-year-old son who was in you know, doing remote schooling like so many kids. And he was having his remote schooling things happening, what with the screen and whatnot, you know, all that kind of glitching and all this stuff and trying to get used to it. So the play might be about that. I don't got time to be dead. I have important work to do. I'm a principal. Also given voice That's on stage, a, a number of those lost during the pandemic. And I have kids looking up to me. Parks has honored them with their own short scenes. Up to. I'm their example. I can't let them down. And the social justice protests after the killings of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. You see me lying here? You see the knee on my neck? I see it. It's real. A lot of people, in, in this country especially, mm -hmm. we think that to, to grieve, you know, bad things that have happened would bring us down. The opposite is true. When we look with love 
and with interest and curiosity towards something that something difficult that m happened, mm -hmm. we are released from its power t to weigh us down. Your way to do that as a playwright is write them into the play and yes. bring them on stage. Well, yes, that's the way that the world works. The, the world works or yeah, the theater world? Well, all the world's a stage. The writer mm -hmm. writes them into the play. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. We've been written into a play. Isn't it fun? The two of us? Sure. This is a play, right? Well, sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but is right. this the way you think about life? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's really what's going on. We have been written into a series of plays. You know, that's what Plays for the Plague Year really is, is looking at, how reality is made. That feels like a good definition of all Park's work, in fact, exploring how our individual and collective reality is made. One guide in shaping that approach, none other than James Baldwin, who first suggested to Parks, then in college and writing short stories, that she try writing a play. I never would have gotten into playwriting had it not been for, for Mr. Baldwin. But, I mean, that is a high-level mandate. He suggested that I might be uh, good at what I do, and I didn't have the heart to prove him wrong. Yeah. I mean, someone has faith in me. I, it means a lot to me. Parks, the daughter of a college professor and army officer, came to see her work as a calling. My parents used to tell me, because we travel all around the world, you are an ambassador of your race, meaning we travel a lot of places where people hadn't met black people before. And as an adult now, I realize uh, I'm one of the ambassadors of the human race. And I'll, I'll, I'll take that on. Well, one thing I was wondering about with this play is, yes. uh, is, is the question, is it too soon? Maybe it's too soon. Uh, I don't think so. The reactions we're getting from the audience, it feels like it's time. It's why stuff the stuff down? Why shove it down and not think about it mm. until when? That's one of the reasons why I'm on stage. I'm not saying, yeah, go re reflect on the pandemic. You know, go over there. No, I'm like, I'm here with you. And so with you that audience members are invited to reflect on their experience of lockdown by filling out cards about what they want to remember or forget. We are the beautiful. We are. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown at the Public Theater in New York.